So um, we're going to get started with this critical incident briefing, and I'll just introduce Kyle Hartzog, Commander Kyle Hart. Good morning. My name is Commander Kyle Hartzog of the Criminal Investigation Division with the Albuquerque Police Department. We're going to talk about the fourth officer-involved shooting of 2024 for our agency, which occurred on March 30th, 2024, at 717 59th Street Northwest. This critical incident community briefing will provide information about a group of males with guns who fled from a traffic stop which resulted in an officer involved shooting. You're about to see relevant video footage and photos and learn about other evidence and police procedures related to the case so you can have a better understanding of what occurred based on what we know right now. The police department conducts very thorough criminal and use of force investigations which typically require investigators to interview multiple witnesses review hours of video footage, and analyze a significant amount of forensic evidence. We're still at the early stages of this investigation, which can often take several months to complete. Our understanding of the incident may change as this additional evidence is collected, analyzed, and reviewed. We also do not draw any conclusions about whether the officers acted consistent with our policies and the law until the facts are known and the investigation is complete. A word of caution, the images and video may be disturbing. When police officers use force to arrest a subject or defend against an attack, it can be graphic and difficult to watch. In addition, there may be strong language by those shown in the video. Two officers discharged their weapons during this officer-involved shooting. Officer Nathan Apodaca, who was assigned to the Northwest Area Command at the time, was hired in 2021. He has no prior officer-involved shootings, and he is back to full duty. Officer Hernan Conscious, who was also assigned to the Southwest Area Command at the time, who was also hired in 2021 and also had no prior officer-involved shootings, is still not back on full duty. At the, time, at the current time of this investigation, we believe four individuals were inside the vehicle when the police shooting occurred. We have confirmed the identity of two of those subjects which are 19-year-old Elijah Archuleta and 20-year-old Caden Davis. This incident took place in our Southwest Area Command. A day before the incident, so we're going to go back just one day prior to the officer-involved shooting, on March 29th, 2024, officers, sorry, officers in the Southwest Area Command were dispatched to uh, the 700 block of 59th Street Northwest in reference to a domestic dispute involving a gun. In an arrest warrant that's now been filed, we allege that Elijah Archuleta, the subject I just showed you, refused to allow his girlfriend to exit the vehicle and go into her home. Elijah eventually allowed her and their two-year-old son who was in the car to exit the vehicle. While she was approaching the front door and started to knock on the front door to get inside, Elijah armed himself and discharged the handgun from the vehicle as he drove away. It's alleged that Elijah drove around the block and discharged the firearm a second time. The victim was not struck. Casings were collected by officers during that investigation and tagged in evidence. Officer Conscious, who would also respond on the day of the officer involved shooting, was the primary officer on this domestic violence aggravated assault call the day before. A warrant was drafted by Officer Conscious, an arrest warrant was drafted by Officer Conscious and sent to the District Attorney's Office on March 30th, the day of the OIS. The warrant was for aggravated assault upon a household member, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, false imprisonment, shooting at or from a motor vehicle, and child abuse without great bodily harm. The arrest warrant had been sent to the DA's office for review and approval, which is the normal process to approve an arrest warrant. Within about an hour of the new call for service happening on March 30th. At the time that the OIS occurred, the warrant had not yet been approved by the DA's office or a judge. The arrest warrant did get approved by the DA's office just after the officer involved shooting occurred and was signed by a judge the morning after the OIS. Two different shot spotter reports were created on March 29th, so again, this is the day before. The OIS. 
This first one is showing the shooting that occurred right in front of the home as the victim alleged Elijah Archuleta was the one who pulled the trigger. The second shot spotter reports uh, is where we allege Elijah drove around the block and fired again. Again, this is March 29th, the day before the officer involved shooting. On March 30th, the day of the officer involved shooting, officers were again dispatched to the 700 block of 59th Street Northwest in reference to Elijah Archuleta being back at the residence. Officer Conscious, who was the primary officer on the domestic dispute call the day prior, was dispatched to this call as well. Officer Conscious met the caller, who was the mother of the victim on the prior day's shooting and domestic violence call, at the intersection of 59th Street and Fortuna Northwest. After speaking with her, a plan was made by officers to conduct a felony stop on the vehicle that uh, Archuleta had arrived in, a Chrysler 300, believing that Archuleta and any other subjects that were inside the vehicle um, are at the front door of the home could be armed, considering the day before a shooting had occurred with the same individual. While performing the felony traffic stop, Elijah, who was initially in the front yard of the home, ran to the vehicle's passenger side and began to get inside. Officer Apodaca, who was there with Officer Conscious, discharged his rifle. Officer Conscious discharged his rifle as the car started to flee the traffic stop. We'll start to play you some of the media at this point. This is the 911 call from the mother of the victim the day before. This is lapel video from Officer Conscious. Officer Conscious stated in his interview with MATF, quote, I'm thinking that he's there to try to kill her or cause harm to her. I see him holding a black object that's shaped like an L. It was black and looked like a handgun. Elijah enters the Chrysler 300 and began to flee. Officer Conscious stated, I see his head turn, making a turning motion, and I see a long, I can't make out exactly what it is, but it's a long black object, and he's turning over to his left side. I thought he was arming himself with a different firearm to try to engage us through their windshield. As officers pursue the Chrysler 300, Officer Conscious states over the radio, Mel had a black object in hand, thought it was a firearm. I'm going to play you this video. It's about four minutes long. It starts when he's uh, leaving the interview with uh, the calling party and then drives over to the house. Yeah, 
This is the Pell video from Officer Apodaca. Officer Apodaca stated in his MATF interview, quote, I look at his left hand, and, he, and his left hand, I see a black handgun. The black handgun, when I see the black handgun, immediately yell, or somebody yells gun. It was like, simultaneously, I heard a gun and saw the gun. The gun begins to raise up in my direction with his left arm. It gets to about my feet, and I decide to defend myself against an immediate threat. I thought I was going to get shot. Here's his video. Thank <laughs> you. 
is video surveillance from across the street of the residence that captures part of the officer involved shooting. There is no audio to this video. Or there is audio, I apologize. This is the shot spotter for the officer involved shooting incident. This is the Pell video from another officer who's down the street ahead of the traffic stop. They do deploy a stop stick, uh, which was successful in deflating at least one of the tires on the vehicle. You can also hear the shooting in the background on the audio. We'll play this for you now. vehicle fled to West Bluff Park, where all the occupants exited the vehicle and fled. In this image, the start of the pursuit where the shooting occurs is in the top left. It ends here just uh, east of the Walmart at Coors and I-40 to kind of orientate you. Officers from the Northwest Area Command Traffic unit, open space unit, K9, and air support all saturated the area and began to search for the individuals who fled the car. This is video from one of the witness officers who detained one of the passengers, Caden Davis, who was located in the Bosque. Caden stated that he only knew one person in the car, but confirmed there were four people total. He only gave a moniker for the person he knew. Caden stated he believed they were only there to pick up clothing for one of the individuals in the car and that he wasn't sure why officers were shooting at them as they drove away. He did flee from the car at the end of the pursuit, but did surrender to police when confronted. He was not charged with a crime that day and was released. There's partial video showing his arrest. This is a photo near the scene of the officer involved shooting. One rifle, 223 caliber uh, casing was located on the sidewalk. 
In this photograph, you can see two impacts on a cinder block wall nearby the shooting from the police firearms. This is just a closer look at one impact and the other. This is the Chrysler 300 that, uh, that fled the traffic stop and was recovered at the park. In the circles, you can see the impacts to the vehicle. At this point in the investigation, we believe the impacts on the right side of the car are from Officer Apodaca. And we believe that the single uh, impact on the left side is from Officer Conscious's rifle. This is another view of the Chrysler 300, just showing the damage to the right side passenger side of the vehicle. This is an impact to the front passenger window. This door was open when it was hit, so we believe at this point that this impact is from inside of the window towards the outside as the door was opened. This is a photograph of a rifle that was found inside the Chrysler 300, which was uh, fully loaded at the time. This is a photo of a, what we would recover as a Glock 45 handgun that was found underneath the front passenger seat. This is a better pulled back image showing that firearm. We actually cut part of the paneling off of the car to recover any possible projectiles, which we did recover fragments of the, uh, the projectiles that entered the car. This is a view of the front windshield of Officer Apodaca's marked patrol unit. It has seven impacts from him firing inside the vehicle out. And this is a view from inside his unit looking outward. We were able to recover the casings inside Officer Apodaca's vehicles. The next few images, images just show where the casings were located inside his patrol unit. This is a photograph of the Glock 45 handgun that was found under the front passenger seat of the Chrysler 300. This gun was reported stolen. The owner of the gun had left it inside a uh, Chevy pickup truck. The Chevy pickup truck was stolen in September of 2023 here in Albuquerque. The truck was recovered, but when it was recovered, this gun was no longer inside the truck. There was no knife in leads at this time connecting to this connecting this gun to any other shootings. We have also tested this firearm against the shooting the day before, and it did not match. This is a photo of the rifle that was taken from the Chrysler 300. It was found on the back seat of the vehicle. The original owner that we did track down stated he sold this gun at a gun show in 2017. It's important to note this was prior to some of the background check requirements that New Mexico now has. He was going to help look for the paperwork of uh, exactly who he sold it to, but at this point we don't have any further information on who purchased the gun. There was also no knife in leads connecting this gun to other shootings at this time. On April 16th, 17 days after the incident, Elijah Archuleta was tracked down by detectives and arrested for the felony warrant that was issued for the domestic violence shooting. He was taken into custody without incident. He stated in his interview that he, fled, that he was there that day. He fled from officers and during the, the flight, grabbed a rifle from the front seat and started to put it in the back seat so he did not have a gun in his possession when officers caught up to him. Elijah stated he received this wound from officers shooting at him. Elijah Archuleta was arrested again 17 days after this incident for his warrant, booked into MDC. The DA's office did file a detention motion on him, and on April 22nd, 2024, a judge decided that he will be held in jail until his trial on that shooting. Again, Caden Davis was released the night of the incident and currently has no charges pending from this incident. Over the next several months, the multi-agency task force will continue to investigate and analyze this call. Detectives will interview any new witnesses that come forward and complete any forensic tests. After the investigation is complete, 
the case will be forwarded to the district attorney's office to make any determination of criminal charges. Our Internal Affairs Force Division will also investigate the shooting to determine whether the department's policies were followed. The results of the administrative investigation will be forwarded to the city superintendent of police reform to make final decisions on discipline. APD's force review board made up of deputy chiefs will also review the incident to identify trends and potential policy changes that may be needed in response to any shortcomings that are identified. I can help answer any questions for you. <coughs> yes. Um, in the, the second video, the officer is driving with one hand and then holding the gun with the other. Uh, is that something that's like done by officers? Is that something that's Well, I'll say it's part of the administrative investigation. Officers are able to deploy their, their force in many different environments and scenarios that can't always be predicted. I can't speak to you accurately on what training's been given to the officers, but um, I've seen it before, and we ask the officers to always adapt to their environments and do the best they can. Yes? Do we know what he was doing outside the lineup? Was he actually picking up clothes? At the moment they pull up, he was talking with, um, you said, you, if you heard her, you could hear her say, my brother is there, who's an adult. She, uh, he's in a conversation with Mr. Archuleta in the front yard. If you look at the neighbor video, you can actually see him at the front door. So he wasn't inside the house, we don't believe he was, but he was still in the front yard, uh, we believe, trying to get into the home or re recover his property. You said that Nathan is back on duty, but Herman is not. Is there a reason why Herman isn't back on duty? All the officers go through different processes, uh, processes depending on how the shooting affects them, and you know we take the mental health and, and the the readiness of the officer very very serious. So um, when when he's ready to come back and the department agrees with it, and he'll be back on duty. But it's not abnormal that sometimes some officers take longer than others. Yes. How far away was Officer Conscious when he shot the vehicle that he was shot? Um, I mean, it's it's less than a car length. Uh, you know, the video can be deceiving because it's the wide angle, but it's it's a felony stop. It's a traffic stop. It's it's uh, closer than what it looks. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm just trying to get the because the body cameras are. Wide I don't have a measurement for you right now. Um, if we're able to get that, I can get it to Gilbert and get it released to you guys. Which side of the car, or which seat did um, Archuleta get into? We believe the front passenger seat. Okay. That's the individual we believe that you see running with the white shirt on. We believe that's uh, Archuleta. And the driver was one of the unidentified people? At this point, at this point we know, we believe Caden's in the back seat, okay. and uh, we're, it's unconfirmed who the, dri the driver is and the other person. Okay, and I know there's caveats, obviously, to every shooting, and we investigate all this, but generally, You know, that is one of our findings and one of the things that we've addressed through the our settlement agreement to shooting at uh, motor vehicles. But I think it's important that we recognize that, like Kyle said from the very beginning, these situations all have unique characteristics. And I think that's why it's so difficult for us to always look at something black and white. And during the course of the administrative investigation, they will come to a determination if uh, shooting at this motor vehicle is appropriate at the time. And uh, they'll have to weigh factors such as did officers feel that there was uh, an immediate threat towards them. So that will be all covered during the administrative uh, investigation by uh, IA Force and IAPS. I, I think it'd be prematurely for me to say if this shooting was concerning to me or not. Some of the factors that I look at that that uh, kind of put me at ease is uh, the statements. Uh, both officers indicated that they felt this individual was running with a black handgun into the car. We found a black handgun under the seat of the car. 
uh, both uh, officers, I believe, stated they felt like there was a long gun being moved within the vehicle. We recovered a long gun within the vehicle. So uh, in terms of uh, me being able to feel comfortable uh, with where we're at at this point in the investigation, the fact that we recovered two firearms the day before there were shots fired on scene is uh, would give me every indication that uh, I feel comfortable at this point in time, but you never know. Something could come out during the course of the IA force or the IAPS investigation that would uh, give us additional information that would make us uh, look at this differently. But as of right now, uh, yeah, we recovered two firearms. Uh, it's consistent with what the officer statements were and uh, officers have the right to defend themselves.